Hi, I'm Mark Liberté with Construction Instruction, and I'm working in concert with AFT to demonstrate high-performance buildings. And the benefit to high-performance homes is that they're comfortable and healthy and safe, durable, more sustainable. Of course, they have to be aesthetically pleasing at the, at the price point in the marketplace we're putting these in. But I think we're really evolving to learn more about the building enclosure in general. So this particular house, of course, being of ICF nature, has some attributes that conventional framing doesn't have. If we look at, uh, for example, two by six, we know that a two by six wall sheathed on the outside, sheathed on the inside of the gypsum, can have different types of insulation in the cavity. Bats, which are also very difficult to install, oftentimes lowering their overall R value by being difficult to install. We'll see netted um, uh, material where they'll blow in either cellulose or fiberglass to fill up the cavity, providing us better insulation due to its density and to fill around all the nooks and crannies in any conventional wall. The challenge with that is that as we look at the framing in any conventional two by six wall, the framing itself is the loss of R value because the R value of that is really about one per inch on a two by six wall with all the materials, sheathing and so on. We'll usually see something around a six or seven in terms of the R value at the stud. So every time we try to beef up the wall cavity, it doesn't really benefit the exterior framing of the wall. So what we're starting to see evolve is that with two by six walls, spraying foam in the cavity still doesn't help us because we still have the loss of uh, energy through the framing itself. What we're seeing the industry now move towards is putting exterior insulation on the outside of the building. So it'll be a two by six wall sheathed, weather protection in many cases, and a layer of insulation on the outside from one inch to two inches, which allows us to have a thermally efficient wall because it now interrupts the, the loss at that solid wood framing. Now if we look at that methodology to get an R22 to 25 wall net after framing, we then move towards products like this, which is an ICF. As an insulated concrete form system, it's going to have a layer of foam, usually anywhere from two and three quarters to three inches, and the same on the outside. I now allow me to spray concrete and pour concrete in between it to give me the structural strength that concrete provides. At the same time, it provides this beautiful thermal benefit to the inside and to the outside. I can now get myself an R20 wall overall. So comparing, comparing a two by six wall, uh, thermal inside on the outside to an ICF wall, we start getting closer to finding out time, labor, and, and materials, which then let us decide which is the best system to get me high performance and long-term durability. You also look at one other piece of this. If we looked at an ICF wall in places that uh, have tornadoes, hurricanes, and some of this other challenge like fire, we start looking at some of the other benefits to cost and the other benefits that um, ICF can bring to the table in terms of structural and, and strength. This house, particularly with a, a steel decking for the second floor, allows this house to be stunningly durable. Where there was earthquake, tornado, hurricane, whatever location it was placed in, would have an amazing amount of, of uh, durability enhancement because of the choices that were made here. So when we look at different wall systems, we always have to make sure it's more than cost, but really what are we trying to achieve in terms of thermal, structural, fire, all of those things play into a choice, not just based on economics. The last reason for this is that we're looking at longevity. Houses should last 100 years or more. So when we look at that front-end investment, the first cost piece of this is really something that we oftentimes trade off, where the long-term value of investing in a whole building enclosure really is the right thing to do when we start building air tightness, water protection, proper window installs, so this house will be healthy, safe, and durable for the entire life of the building. Today, when we look at houses, we're starting to understand more important things like resilience. Now, resilience takes on all kinds of, of levels, but we look at fire resilience, um, storm resilience, water resilience, all of the things that we see in our country that are really getting challenged by us looking at buildings for a hundred year plus life. When we do that, we'll start seeing that what marketplace needs what type of protection. We saw some of the houses that were ICF built on the coast of Florida when hurricanes came through and realizing in some cases those are the only ones still standing. When we saw other places in markets with fire, 
The houses that were designed with the intention of managing wildfire, exterior uh, insulation like rock wool, uh, resisting thermal, um, looking at cladding systems that don't allow burn through, looking at tile and metal roof to make sure that those things are less impacted. We saw houses that as long as they had tempered glass on the outside to reduce breakage, the fires had much more difficult time getting inside. So many times a house that burns, the embers come through a, a broken piece of glass or gets lodged up into the attic space. So we're learning so much more about resilience based on the products that we build, the longevity of the product, and how we want to protect our family for that kind of future. And I think we all have to look differently at buildings other than square footage and cost per square footage, but what we're expecting this house to do. In this particular project, you're gonna see that what we've done here on the second floor is create this kind of moment frame where we've got a steel deck with a concrete pour. So on top, as we move through in that direction, we'll see what they've done to add this level of enhancement on a building that could have gotten by with conventional wood frame floors, but as we enhance that, there'll be four inches of concrete poured on top of a metal deck. Um, what a difference that'll make in terms of the long-term success of this house. A hundred years from now, I believe its ability to withstand the weather and the impacts um, that might be light in an Arizona climate, in any climate, could be remarkable. So let's walk upstairs and take a look at what they've done with the metal deck on the second floor. I'm working in partnership with the AFT to help us demonstrate techniques and methods for building really high performance homes. And this happens to be in a desert climate. Though as we look at how we build across all climate zones, we'll start seeing that methods like ICFs can have remarkable benefits, whether it's in cold climate or a hot climate, coastal uh, hurricanes or tornado zones, even in marketplaces with fire. In this particular application, you're gonna see that on the outside, of course, uh, the way ICFs are built, there's a, a expanded polystyrene, concrete on the width in the center, and then some foam on the inside, which is this layer we're standing on the interior. In this particular room, we're installing uh, uh, an LSL framing stud, and then that'll be uh, wires and penetrations will go and stay in this cavity. We'll probably blow fiberglass insulation in the balance here to give us an added R value to this second floor. This bedroom, you can imagine how comfortable it'll be as we add cooling or add heating, very small differences in temperature because of the way in which this wall will perform. The overall design of this, you can see, is designed for thermal performance. Now as I put my drywall on here with insulation, imagine how well it's going to prevent moisture from getting into the cavity, which is what we see in many other markets. We'll see the thermal performance allows the insulation to make really nice benefits to sound, which in a place like ICF, we have very little sound, sound issues as well. So this is a remarkably durable design wall. The other challenge with ICF sometimes is trying to get a straight surface. So when we install these elements, cells, we can now make sure that this wall is perfectly straight. So when we put our drywall on and we finish that with a level five finish, it'll be a beautifully straight wall. It's a little harder to do that with the uh, ICFs. So this will give us what we're looking for in terms of beauty and aesthetics. We're out on the project site here and looking at some details of how a, a mass floor like this can have some amazing benefits. In this particular project being ICF, we've installed a floor system that's really a commercial floor. You can see by us looking at a section, we'll see how there was steel and then we placed the metal deck on top and there's actually four inches of concrete poured on top of this where now we will begin our floor finishes, whether it's a uh, tile, wood, or even carpet. It allows to have such an amazing level of durability, no sound issues that we'll have in terms of transfer through. And when you have a second floor adjacent to a first floor, it really makes it nice um, and durable in terms of how it responds to the rest of the building. So I like this approach. It's a little sturdy um, and a little more commercial based, but you can see what a benefit it is to see this level of tenacity and strength. So as we kind of finish up the discussions about building science, which are never ending, um, we'll talk a little bit about why we did the things we've done and why we need to do these things. You know, building healthy, safe, durable, efficient, aesthetically pleasing buildings is what our clients expect. It's what society expects, that we build buildings that can handle all the stresses that either environment or people put on us. 
In this particular house, we're demonstrating a lot of ways to build a really remarkable home that is aesthetically pleasing, very healthy for the family with good indoor air quality and extreme comfort, um, as well as we try to demonstrate a way to do that anywhere in the world and anywhere in this country. And as a building industry that is so vital to building structures for people, this is a great example of learning more about how science, physics, and aesthetics all mixed together. So we look forward to seeing you more and opportunities in the future as this house takes on its full um, focus of what it really hopes to be in the end.